one start. Hi, I'm David Boji, and this is another event in organizational research methods. And we're going to look at the work of Martin Heidegger. And our objectives today is to deal with the transition from block time that you just saw and heard to a whole other time. Thank you. Okay, you just saw and heard clock time in the mechanical sense. And one of the things Heidegger wants to do is to move to a different idea of time, space and time in the world, so we're being in the world. So here we have a depiction of a different understanding of time. And that's our theme for today. Thank you. So what an one issue that our international students and scholars have to learn to adjust to when they arrive here in the U.S. is our more linear perception of time. So in the U.S. we see time as very rigid, and often in other countries they see time as a little bit more fluid. So we anecdotally used to call this ish time, where here in America we say, all right, we're meeting at 7 o'clock, and we mean 7 o'clock or maybe even arriving a couple minutes before 7. And a lot of the international students here, we're meeting at 7-ish. So there's this big struggle to adjust culturally to this far more punctual, rigid view of time. And when you look at the sundial here, you can kind of see more what their aspect of time would be. How you can see from the sundial that it's 1-ish, but you can't see that it's 12, 58, and 30 seconds. Um, you can just see kind of a flexible view of what time it might be. And then in the background here, you can see our Welcome Aggie sign. And when our international students and scholars arrive here on campus, one of their first stops would be the Office of International Students and Scholars. So that's where we'll be heading next. We're now moving in space-time, which is another kind of relationship that's in Heidegger. And we want to understand just how these space and time are connected together. So what does it mean when Heidegger said space is time and space is in time? And so we're interested in system of New Mexico State University. And it's all about Aggie discovery, Ignite Aggie discovery system. Coming here as an international student, you might feel like a duck out of water. And you'd be right. So the first step we're interested in is the space of the system and its environment. Filming here by the pond at NMSU, and there's a bridge here, and we're interested in the bridge between concern and care. And this is the Office of Student Services, where one might effect, expect to find international students and international scholars office. But it's actually not there. So I'm looking for the Office of International Students and Study Abroad, I guess it is. It's supposed to be in room 152, which is in geography. Let's just go down here and find it. We're moving through space and time to find the office be here. There it is, 152. And there we go. Could you tell me, person on the street, <laughs> about the Office of International Students and Scholars? Sure. So I think what's we, its space? When we talk about their space, we kind of look at how Heidegger is identifying two different dialectics, and we look at the solicitude. So the care, concern for someone or something. And in Heidegger's case, he would talk about the system of care versus concern. 
And I think we can see both when we look at, at the international students and scholars. So sometimes the university is approaching the side of concern when we look at how the office is situated um, within the geography department rather than being in student services or being with the other cultural groups on campus. Um, and when the university talks about numbers and revenue lines, but then we also look at the system of care when we talk about how the students are um, be adjusting to the culture and how the programming that they're doing to help them succeed here. Obviously, you need both concern and care. In the area of concern, the Office of International Students and Scholars has a Center for English Language, a Confucius Institute, an International and Border Programs, an Office of Education Abroad, Passport Office, and a Center for Latin American and Border Studies. But is this what students are looking for? Well, we thought it'd be nice to stop at the Spiritual Center because uh, last week we spoke about Hegel and all of his spirituality. Okay. We're in the Spiritual Center here. There's no iconic objects. I'm not sure how many can feel about that. So you have some questions for me? So step two, who are the ways of behavior and doing of the organizational system? Well, we start the investigation by looking logically at the programs. We talked about they have different programs and they have calculations of the number of international students and what their majors are and how much tuition they're paying out of state to come to the university, those sorts of things. So logically, it begins. And then we start to look at care, the heart of care, and what is the caring of the people working in these systems towards the international student, the caring on the part of the whole university, not just the Office of International Students and Scholars that's inside the geography branch of Freeman Hall. And who undertakes voyages within the organizational systems? I think we all do. But in particular, obviously, the international students, like logically. But then what is the meaning of their voyage? What meaning do they get from being here at New Mexico State University? The advertised narrative is that there's 200 or more student groups. They can join the student culture. They can sit by the pond that we were just at. You know, so the trees, the outdoors, the whole environment is part of the voyage, right, through space. And then there's the voyage of getting in, passing all their TOEFL requirements, uh, getting their paperwork done, paying their fee, getting accepted, coming onto campus, finding a place to live, and dealing with being a culture from another land. Are there? Well, one place of being is the spiritual center and the spirituality and the dear dialectic. But if we get out into the spatiality of the environment, there's many other things we can talk about. What's the question? Oh, in step three, can you look at every mode of being in the world here at New Mexico State University for the international office? Sure, so there we would look at the different modes of being. So you could look at being included. Are they included in the different groups on campus? Are they integrated in the housing system? Or there's being with. Are they being with part of the group? Are they staying being with part of um, just people coming from their country as well? Is there being alone? Are they segregated? Are they left out of a lot? There's also being among and being alongside. So how are they included as part of the population here? There's also being missing. So are they missing home? Are they missing everybody that they used to know? Or being indifferent? There you start to talk about the system more. Is the system indifferent towards them? Um, or the being present at hand or being ready at hand? We've come to step four. What are the modes of distance? things far away, and disseverance, bringing things close together. So in our case of the international students and scholars, one mode of distance would be considering we're spatially 
the university has put them on campus. They're far away from a lot of the other student activities. They're kind of hidden down a long hallway that no one would typically go down. But then there's also a lot of deseverance happening as well. So this de-distancing, where they're having the students live in campus housing with the other students or doing programs where they're trying to help integrate them with other students so that they do feel part of the community and there's a de-distancing there as well. Done. Okay. Man, it's like we're writing my final paper. So David, what are the hermeneutical system of organizational system research? Well, hermeneutics began with the study of the Bible. So I thought we'd be here in the spiritual center and plug on the panel, but not too much. Uh, because that's what they used to do, is uh, do Bible scholarship. And you would have a canonical, and you would look at every word and its meaning in the context of history. And we started doing it that way. Now Heidegger comes along, and he's got a different hermeneutics. And this book, The Anthology, The Hermeneutics of Facticity, Right? And he's trying to get at that difference between concern and what I call the heart of care. Being in Time by Martin Heidegger and the ontology, the hermeneutics of facticity. When doing hermeneutics, in organizational systems research, what are some questions that we might ask that Heidegger poses? So on page 72, Heidegger says we can ask questions such as, what is it for? What are we supposed to do with it? Who is it for? What is it supposed to be for? And who made it? I hope you get a starting point from that. And I have one more chart to talk about, and we're just about done. Thank you. In the Hermeneutics of Facticity book, there is an important passage on page 72. Past and future are definite horizons which each define the present, pressing forth into the there. And it's also the path of being. Just to wrap up, there's several dialectics you can find in Heidegger. One is solicitude dialectic, the opposition of a heart of care, liberated through disseverance and being with, versus a circumspect concern and different aloofness, domination. Second dialectic, not being, becoming. Being and not becoming posed by the process of becoming in the negation of negation. Finally, who has taken over system being as everyday being with one another, or is domination the they? Those they, those they, the system you're in, the they. Thank you. And we hope you come back and see us again at Organizational Research Methods. And here's our website.